postulatos presentas de acos. Quisilos es dignos. Testificor ipsos dignos es el. Dio gracias. Acendan tu cuerpo. Acipe, Spiritum Sanctum. Edward C. McDonough. Acipe, Spiritum Sanctum. John J. Kagan. Achipe Spiritum Sanctum. I'll raise you a nickel. Not me. Are you bluffing, Mrs. DeFranco? Ah, uh, you gotta pay to see father. I believe her, Padre. Oh, my goodness. It looks like the Lord has intervened. <laughs> <laughs> it's 10.30 already. I really must be going. Oh, just a minute. Thank you, Mrs. DeFranco, for a fantastic dinner. You're very welcome. A little lasagna for you, oh, Father. A treasure. <laughs> I'll have to defend it with my life when the other fathers of the rectory get a sniff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I forgot to bless the boys. Uh, uh, Father, if it wouldn't be too much of an imposition? Of course I will. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. You're not praying, Angelo. Come on now. You know what to do. Hail Mary, Hail Mary full, of grace, full of grace, the Lord is with, the Lord thee. Is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for sinners, now and Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us now. You stop this, Angelo. You stop this right now. Look at you. You're bleeding. You're, you're scaring the shit out of me. What is happening to you? I can't take this anymore. <laughs> if you don't get help, I am going to take the kids and leave. I am going to take the kids and leave. <sighs> Girl, 
girls, girls, go back to bed. If only you'd come to me then, Angelo, we could have done something. My whole life has been a dream wreck because of it. I can't even hold a marriage down. This is my third try at it, and it's not going so good. I don't deny that it happened. Oh, Angelo, no, not at all. It's just, we just, we just didn't know. Yeah, I'm so sorry, Angelo. I must be reassured that he's not still around and able to do this to another kid. We yeah, Father Gagan was removed from the parish years ago. He was sent away to a hospital in Hartford. It's where they treat them, priests like Father Gagan. He must never serve as a priest again. No, Angelo, no, not ever. You know, Father, this is the first time I've been in church in over 20 years. Come back to church, Angelo. No, I, I don't think so, Father. God misses you. It, it was okay. I'm, I'm gonna be all right. <laughs> Why did this happen to me? <laughs> when a birthday party. <laughs> That's Uncle Johnny when he was 16 and his girlfriend. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's your Aunt Margie. That's your Aunt Margie. Oh my <laughs> Look at that hair. I know, it's so big. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're telling me. <laughs> oh, look, girls. That's your father when he made his first Holy Communion. Was so young. Oh, how handsome he was, eh? Yeah. Oh, Angelo, look. Look, Angelo, eh? <laughs> <laughs> That's dead. Yeah. Oh, Angelo, remember that priest we all liked, Father Gagan? He's up at St. Matthew's now. He said on Mass last Sunday. Yeah. Look, do you have that space like your dad? Look. No. No. <laughs> he was cute, wasn't he? Yeah. What a button. following a new civil suit filed by attorney Mitchell Garabedian on behalf of the alleged victims, the Boston DA's office launched its own investigation. As a result, Father John J. Gagan, accused of sexual assault of a minor, has been taken into custody by Boston police. Father Gagan will be arraigned at the Suffolk County Courthouse. This is Jamie O'Connor reporting. Now back to you, Edward. Strong North of Massachusetts versus John J. Gagan, case number 137. The grand jury sitting in Suffolk County has indicted on count one indecent assault and battery of a child under 14. How does the defendant plead? That will be enough! I said that it will be enough for a bail! We will keep control of the court. Another outburst will be dealt with soon. You will take your seat or bailiff will remove you from the court. Mr. Carabinian! Counselor, how does the defendant plead? 
Not guilty, Your Honor. Mind if I tape this? No, go ahead. Garabedian. It's Armenian. It's kind of hard to spell. So how come they send the religion reporter to cover a crime? You mean an alleged crime? Boss and Globe still kissing the Archdiocese's ass, huh? I can see that you're out to win friends and influence people. I'm sorry. It's been kind of an emotional day for me. The turned around collar, no turned around collar. The guy's a scumbag. But these uh, alleged molestations took place as long ago as 20 years. I mean, is this another example of recovered memory? I got five clients, all victims of this priest. Ordinary good kids, straight-A students, athletes. They love their mothers and their fathers. Ordinary little boys. Then this piece of shit, excuse me, Father Gagan, he starts coming around, and the kids' grades go in the toilet. Quit the team, skip school, start drinking. 10, 12-year-old boys who should be thinking about playing baseball, all of a sudden take a nosedive out of life. You're in this business 20 years. Your bullshit meter gets pretty good. Trust me, Miss Magnus, my five clients are just the tip of the iceberg here. Yeah, but how much money do you want from the church? Huh. You're not hearing me, Marge. This is not just about money. Really? Those shoes look good on you, Marge. Mm. Got this. Did I? <laughs> I need to talk to you. Do I know you? You said tip of the iceberg to her. That's what she said. Tip of the iceberg. You see that? That's me. Part underneath the water. The part you haven't seen yet. You see that thing in the moose? Father Gagan? Yeah. Shot. Right. I went down to the courthouse to his arraignment. Hired a lawyer. What for? For what he did to us, Johnny. Patrick McSorley, I'm here to see you. Mitchell Garabini. Um, he's on the phone. Can I have a seat? Can't smoke in here. Come on, John, you want to go round and round with this? Because that's what you're doing here. No, 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 the offer is not fair and just. It's my client who's in a fucking wheelchair, John, not you. Hey, you want to drag this before a judge? Terrific. I mean, that's like Custer asked for another crack at the Indians. <laughs> I'll see you in court, pal. A uh, Patrick McSorley's here to see you. I think he's another victim. Mm. Thank you. Patrick? Where is he? He said he needed some air. All right.
Mr. Garabedian. I'm Patrick McSorley. My father was an alcoholic. <clears throat> he killed himself when I was 12. Father Gagan knew us from when we lived over in Jamaica Plain. He, um, came over one day to offer my mother condolences that my father had, uh, that he, <clears throat> that he was dead. I remember it was a Saturday, and, uh, it was really hot. I had been, uh, playing football uh, with my friends. Patrick, come over here. Father Gagan wants to talk to you. Your mom said I could take you for ice cream. Cool. What do you say to that? Yeah. Deal. I'll see you later. Father. Father. Come on. Hop in. Thank you. Uh, we, uh, we got the ice cream and we just kept driving around in his car. And, uh, I remember the ice cream was, you know, good. And uh, it felt nice, you know. I was sorry to hear about your dad. For a young boy like you, that's, that's an awful loss. Doctor to doctor, asking him why am I so depressed. And then I saw Gay you know, on TV, you know, uh, when he was arrested. And uh, I started thinking maybe it was something he saw in me, you know, that I had uh, made it happen. I don't know. Hey, you were just a kid. It was not your fault, Patrick. I want you to remember that. You were just a kid. How long did it go on? Like, I don't know. Yes. And you never told anybody? Who would have believed me? I have a three-year-old son. I never let him out of my sight. I don't trust anybody. If a priest can molest a little boy, Anything can happen. <laughs> they were just so sweet. I got caught up in their acts of affection. They were from troubled homes. Seriously disturbed children un under treatment. They would. They would admit to sexual abuse at the hands of anyone. Doctors, teachers. Anyone, I guess. I had love for them. It was the children that misunderstood. All right, National gets 72 column inches. Foreign gets 96, at least 72 for Metro. Bobby. We have the three Red Sox scalpers arrested in Fenway. Sue the city. Hey, I got a human interest for you. A plague of frogs in the Philippines because of a faceless statue of Jesus. Actually, that's a great companion piece if we do Maj's story on the priest who was arrested. What was his name? Uh, Gagan, John J. Gagan. Yeah, I read the copy, Marge. It's a little thin. I mean, what do we know about the filings? Evidence. Caught records were sealed. What do you mean the records are sealed? This isn't an espionage case, is it? 
It's the way it's always been done with the church. Okay, someone tell the Jew from Miami what I'm missing here. <laughs> ah, well, uh, Marty, the, the Archdiocese has always enjoyed a, um, a special relationship with the courts here in Boston. You know, the church is an honored institution here. They do a lot of good. I understand all that, but this case is in front of the courts, am I right? What are they hiding? Well, Mitchell Garabedi and the plaintiff's lawyers hawking the idea that this case was, as he puts it, just the tip of the iceberg. No, no. He's the plaintiff's lawyer. What else would he say? Yeah, but the thing that keeps sticking is that Gagan's court case got sealed, but no other case. Makes you wonder, doesn't it? What do you think, Robbie? This one for the spotlight team? Who'd you say the lawyer was? Uh, Garabedi, Mitchell Garabedi in uh, New England School of Law. He mostly does bodily injury and torts. He, he's nobody. It's a dangerous story for the paper, Marty. What if we get it wrong? Then it's our ass, isn't it? We'll have to go out and work for a living. <laughs> <laughs> Request to inspect and produce all documents, writings, notes, memos, and other tangible things that relate in any way whatsoever to sexual misconduct, reprimands, counseling, letters of complaint regarding the aforementioned plaintiffs and Father John J. Gagan, blah, 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 you know the rest. And when you've done that, have a messenger take it over to my esteemed opponent, Wilson Rogers, Jr. Oh, and make sure you get a signed receipt of acceptance. Sure. Garabedian, we are prepared to settle your client's suits right now for the full limit of the insurance policy. But you don't even know my client's charges. Well, we think this is a, a very generous offer, Mr. Garabedian. Those children put their trust in a priest who destroyed their innocence and their future. And the church that was supposed to look after them when they were children, it was... It was looking the other way, and now you want me to take this money and do the same thing? Mitchell, you know the limitations on any suit against the church is 20000 But if you leave this meeting without accepting, our offer is withdrawn. Interesting. Bishop Murphy, Mr. Rogers, thank you for your time. I've requested documents pertaining to my client's charges. If I don't get them by the end of the week, I'm going to file a motion to compel seeking sanctions. Um, Mr. M uh, Rogers here will tell you what that means, sir. Can we win this? I can tie him up in court appeals, First Amendment, canon law issues of confidentiality, communication between a priest and a superior. That's not what I asked, Wilson. In the end, no. He's entitled to the Gagan records. I'll call the Cardinal. We just finished, Your Eminence. He turned us down. I see. Hey. Late night, Mitch. Yeah, what's this? This is from the Archdiocese. It's the records of John J. Gagan. This says bill recipient, $320. So give him your credit card. What's the problem? It's 9.30, Mitch. I'm going home. The charges against Gagan here going back to 1965. It's mind-boggling. Well, how come none of this ever got out? Wilson Rogers. He got the parents to settle out of court with gag orders. If the victims, any of them, ever talked to anybody, they'd have to pay the money back with penalties. And all the records were impounded by the presiding judge. Well, since when is a civil case placed under seal? Since when the church needs a favor is when. I mean, it's, 
It's incredible. So Gagan just goes to another parish and starts doing the same thing all over again. And even when they transfer him to an affluent parish, he would go back to visit the poor projects where the parents were too busy working to notice what he was doing to their kids. I wonder how many never came forward. Yeah, thank you. Hey, I got your call. What do you got for me? How's it going? I'm oh, good. You know, listen to the families and hang them. Gag and hang around with. Oh, well, that's good. It's very good. It's going to be very helpful. Thank you. Hi, I'm an attorney. I'm looking for people in the neighborhood who used to know uh, Father John Gagan. No, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I don't know him. All right. Okay. Thank you very much. Hi, uh, I'm Mitch Garabedi, and I'm a lawyer representing the plaintiffs, uh, families in this parish in a case against Father John J. Gagan. I know who you are. Thank you. So I asked my son, Kevin, he's the youngest, why he never told me what happened. He said Father Gagan told him I wouldn't believe him that I loved the church so much I wouldn't believe my own son. So I went to see the pastor, Father Thomas. Oh, I was mad as hell. I told him if something wasn't done, I was going to send a letter to the cardinal. So a few weeks later, Father Thomas comes to see me. And you came here? Yeah, sat right where you're sitting. Tommy Gagan had admitted to abusing my boys. All of them. All seven? Yeah. And he, he told the pastor? Yeah, but he said it was no big deal. It was just two families is all. Father Thomas, he didn't want me to go public with it, you know. You know, he pleaded with me. He told me about how Father Gagan had worked so hard and for so many years to become a priest. He said I should think about his old mother. I should think about his mother. He never asked about my kids. Not once. Did they offer you money? I didn't care about money. These were my kids. I'm sorry, I understand. I wrote my letter to the Cardinal. Did you send the letter? Yeah. Yeah, I got a copy of it right here. Along with the receipted delivery. I wanted Cardinal Law to know what was going on here. I wanted him to help my children. And did he? <laughs> Are you kidding? Do you mind if I keep these for a while? Sure, I'll take it. You're my lawyer now, ain't you? Yes, I am. Judy, put Sean on. Hey, it's me. Listen to this. He got a registered letter from a woman complaining about Gagan. I got the copy right in my hand. 
He knew. Shauna, in 1984, the Cardinal knew. Robbie, just listen to me, okay? You'll find everything you need. Right, call me. They want to see documents, proof of a conspiracy. The documents are under seal, Mitch. You'll be disbarred. Maybe. Or, like when I file this motion to depose Bishop Banks, let's say that I attach an exhibit. Say, in this instance, a memo from Banks to Law in 1989. You better clip his wings before there's an explosion. You can't afford to have him in a parish. Now, that is legal and justifiable. Everybody knows that a motion is not subject to the secrecy order. Anybody can read this. You sly son of a bitch. You've been doing that all along? Attaching exhibits, laying it out? Guilty. The thing is, the damn reporters must have had their heads up their asses. They never found them. So, of course, you told them. Yeah. I'm tired of waiting, Shauna. We've got memos, we got transcripts here. We got it all, Marty. Now, you're not gonna believe it, it's amazing. It was discussed among the highest officials of the archdiocese. Law knew, but did nothing. It's huge. What are you telling me, Wilson, that this lawyer, this Garabedian, attached certain church documents about Gagan to his motions and that the Boston Globe has seen them? Is he allowed to do that? Yes, and now the Globe is petitioning the court for the release of all the Gagan documents. So what are we going to do? Well, I don't want you to worry. We did get lucky. Judge Constance Sweeney is going to be hearing the Globe's motion. Why does that make us lucky? Constance Sweeney went to Holy Cross Grammar School, the Cathedral High School, and the Newton College of the Sacred Heart. Be seated. Case docket number 772, motion brought by the Boston Globe to set aside the order and so release 11,000 pages of documents, now under protective order, pertaining to accusations of sexual abuse of children by John J. Gagan, priest. I read your briefs with great interest, especially yours, Mr. Rogers. Well written. Thank you, Your Honor. However, the public's right to have access to information that materially affects their welfare takes precedence over an institution's desire to keep that information secret, unless it's a matter of national security. The Archdiocese is not contending that these records will affect national security, is it, Mr. Rogers? No, Your Honor. Motion to set aside the protective order is granted. Yes. Mr. Garabedian, a moment, please. Your Honor. Very clever. What? Careful. You're skating very close to the razor's edge. Yeah. All right. I'm getting the machine again. This is the office of Donna Morrissey, spokesperson for the Archdiocese of Boston. Please leave your name and phone number. Donna, it's Sasha Pfeiffer from the Boston Globe again. We are going to press with or without your input. Is there anything else, Your Eminence? Mm -hmm. Well, no, that will do.
sad. How sad I am. To serve a church where pastors abuse children, not once, not twice, but hundreds of times. Predators in holy vestments. Wolves, not shepherds. This, this is not a cardinal. This is a Nixon. This is a cover-up. You've been a minor miracle to this community. But your mouth bags. Your mouth is gonna get you in trouble. William, I never cared for the cardinals. Not when I was a young man. It might have made a difference in my career. Certainly not now. I'm, well, I'm almost 60. <laughs> you are 60. Well, there you are, then. Morning, Mitch. Morning, everybody. Here, BD. Yeah. Angela Crow. Oh, right, right, Johnny. Yeah. yeah. Glad you're here, Johnny. Just, just give me a minute, will you? Sorry I'm late. Look at this. I spelled my name right. I'll be with you in a minute here. Judy, can I see you? Yep. You ought to be ashamed of yourself, Gary Beatty. Assaulting helpless. <laughs> Judy, call her back. Ask her if she'll do lunch. But tell her she pays. <laughs> you got about six more like that. Really? Yeah, seriously, Mitch News, we called. They want to schedule a phone interview, and WCBS wants to send someone down to do tape. Newsweek? Mm-hmm. Wow. All right, yeah, set it up. Huh? OK, OK, so maybe you did know what you were doing. How many we got out there? 10. 23 calls on the service, all of them about Gagan. Hey, first we have to win the cases. That's when we get paid. At the moment, all we have out there is potential. Drinking our coffee, eating our donuts. Well, what are you, Jewish? Tannenbaum, that's a Jewish name, isn't it? <laughs> all right. Let's see what we got here. We have Mary Ryan's letter to Cardinal Law in 1984. That proves that Cardinal Law knew what Gagan was up to. The church is therefore liable. But the church is protected by the Charity Immunity Clause. Court-imposed verdicts are limited to 20,000 each. That's like a slap in the wrist. OK, then. So we don't sue the church. We sue the man in the red hat, his eminence, Bernard Cardinal Law. Ain't no charitable limitations on him. <laughs> what? The Cardinal has no money. He doesn't even own a car. Yeah, but if we nail him, believe me, the Archdiocese is not going to let him suffer. They'll pay his freight. Nobody's ever sued a Cardinal before. So what? You got balls, Mitch. <laughs> yeah, I do. This whole unfortunate Gagan situation is getting completely out of hand. What do you think, Donna? I want to hear Miss Morrissey's thoughts on this. This is not about denial. It's about emphasis. And what we need to get across is, OK, this happened. We're sorry. And now we want to be involved so that it doesn't happen again. Well, oh, the damn press want a scandal ever since Clinton. You mean ever since Nixon? Dear God, a Democrat. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't that funny? You're right about the press. And we need to set a backfire. Yes, I think what I want to say is that uh, John Gagan's transgressions we're not the fault of a... Um, um, a caring church, Your Eminence. John Gagan's transgressions were not the fault of a caring church, but the tragic act of one depraved man. A rare exception. Yes. You 
children do not go into that cathedral. Your church harbors pedophiles. How can you call yourselves Catholic? Please, don't go into the church today. These days are particularly painful for the victims of John Gagan. My apology to them and to their families, and particularly to those who were abused in assignments which I made, comes from a grieving heart. I am indeed profoundly sorry. Judgments were made which, in retrospect, were tragically incorrect. Please pray that those responsible may come to a conversion of heart and self-awareness. But know that John Gagan's transgressions were not the fault of a caring church, but the aberrant act of one depraved man. Ah, it's bullshit, Spags, and you know it. They don't teach a shit from Shinola about what's going on in the world. And in two years, we're gonna be our damn priests. Yeah, Billy. They don't catch us smoking first. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, see? But we can't read newspapers, we can't listen to music, we can't talk about sex. <laughs> Definitely not talk about sex. How are we supposed to help people in a world we know nothing about? <sighs> Shit, Spags, half the brothers here are not even regular guys, and you know. So what? I mean, so they never dated girls. Does that mean they can't be called by God? Well, they're called all right. Well, I mean, it's not God on the other end of the line. Take Gagan, okay? Can you imagine what kind of priest Jolly Johnny's gonna be? <laughs> Speak of the devil. <laughs> Jolly Johnny itself! I caught you fellas smoking, didn't I? Yeah, I confess, we were smoking. And now I bind you, Brother John Gagan, to the secrecy of the confessional, never to speak of this to anyone again. Sure. Good. Pray for the hundreds of faithful priests in this archdiocese who bear with me the burden of the few. Let us bow our heads. Lord, make me an instrument of thy peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. That's not the assholes, huh? You got me?
肩膀，你说。The church spokes bay that cooks down in Morrissey. Bitch is building a bullshit fence around law. I'll tell you what, Owen. She can sit on this anytime. So, so there were a bunch of them. Noisy too, but I didn't go in. You see this? Cases popping up all over the country now. Yeah, that one fucking mention of Father Burning Hands. Top of his glass in the semen area. Should we call the papers? Fuck the papers. I'm a lawyer. Dead and buried, Gary. Gone. I want you to practice all four ways to divide, and then I want you to move on to your subtraction and your multiplication. I want you to review pages 23 through 25. The test will be on Friday, and I do hope to see better results than the last time. Need I remind you? Good morning, Father. Sister Martha. Class. Good morning, Father Bernie. I need to see Tom Blanchett in the guidance room. Birmingham came, put me in a car once. We were doing, you know, driving by the ice cream thing. We passed a bishop. He fucking waved at us. I love you, Come on, guys. You know. Shauna. Shauna. Yes, Mitchell. Did you read this Doyle thing? Oh yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's like a blueprint for the entire cover-up. 100,000 children molested by priests. Doyle says it could cost the church a billion dollars. Now, Doyle gave the report to Law in 85. Law was head of a committee on the bishop's council looking into abuse. So Law had to have read this report? Absolutely. But it jump-started his heart there. All right, all right, look. We have Mary Ryan's letter to the Cardinal. Now we have the Doyle report, proof that Law knew, or he should have known, that there are priests out there assaulting children. I mean, that's it. That's it. We, we draft a complaint against his eminence today. Good. How, how do we get this thing? Gary! No, who, who's Gary? What, what? Gary Cohen, our Boston College intern. He's Dick Tracy on this one. Well, hey, good work on this, Gary. How'd you find this? It was right there, LexisNexis. So this Doyle guy, where, is he still at the Vatican Embassy? No. He got transferred out of D.C. a few months after the report was submitted. April 1986. Air Force chaplain. Azores. Ah, <laughs> they transferred him to the Azores. Yep. That's unbelievable. So, uh, where is he now, do you know? Rhein-Main Air Base, Germany. Hey, good work. 100,000 cases of abuse. That was my estimate based on our investigation of the records, true. And you're sure Law saw the report? I put it in his hand. Why didn't he act on it? He did act on it, Mr. Garabedian. Not in the way I'd hoped, but he did act. Yeah. Kill the messenger. Buried the truth. Not anymore. 
Well, thank you, Major. I appreciate this. You're welcome. Good night. He's suing your eminence as corporate Saul, personally. You're not serious. How can that be? Didn't you tell me the statutes of limitations had run out? In some cases, yes, but not all. His strategy is to bump it up to criminal and then come back and slam us in civil court. Criminal? That you engaged in a criminal conspiracy to cover instances of child molestation, a felony. And if you stretch the definition of possible RICO case, but don't worry, Your Eminence. He's only interested in the money. And I won't allow you to be deposed by that little ambulance-chasing bastard. But I'm a named defendant in this suit. I'm required by statute to be deposed. Am I not, Counselor? Not if we settle the case. I'll be back in touch with your office by 3 o'clock this afternoon. In the meantime, not to worry. Oh, uh, by the way, the Doyle report that Garabedian cites, do you recall what that is exactly? Just coffee. Actually, uh, cappuccino. <laughs> so you wanted to impress me. I'm impressed. Good. I want you to be impressed. I want you to take me seriously. Mitch, you're going to withdraw your order to depose the cardinal. All right. Why am I going to do that? Because you and I are going to settle this case right now. The Cardinal wants the victims to be taken care of. I'm offering your clients 30 million. 30? We have the money, we can do the deal. Where's the money coming from? It'll be paid out of insurance accounts and a line of credit at Fleet Bank. Just like that? Just like that. All the plaintiffs have to sign, all 86 of them, no exceptions, the deal's withdrawn. I'm doing the math here. The only math that should concern you, Mitch, is 33 and a third percent of $30 million. That's it? Not quite. Everybody has to sign a confidentiality agreement. The settlement's the end of any and all claims against the church in perpetuity. You still don't get this, do you? Secrecy is the problem here. I mean, these people are heroes for speaking out. You should be thanking them for clearing out this cancer. This is not the city of hope, Mitch. You want to play that hand, that's your call. Consider the offer withdrawn. Thanks for the cappuccino, Wilson. Mitch. Come on back here, sit down. Okay. Secrecy is off the table. Deal? Yeah. I'll notify Judge Sweeney to hold off on the proceedings that we've uh, reached an agreement. Don't forget to tip the waiter, Mitch. Be generous. You can afford it now. I want a trial. I want them to apologize to me and my brother. All of us. The money is bullshit. Look, Angela, what you started here, it is in the press. Every day there's something new. They're getting buried under a shitstorm. But they haven't heard from me. I want to stand up in a courtroom in front of all of them 
and look the Cardinal in the eye and tell him what he did to me and my brother. All right. Okay. Look, it's my duty as your lawyer to tell you when there's an offer on the table. It's also my duty to tell you that a week from now, that offer may not still be here. If we go to trial, we may not win a settlement anywhere near as good as this one. We may not win anything. I just want you to understand that. Did I just hear us losing our settlement, Mitch? I hope I didn't hear that, because ever since you started this crusade, there's been no money coming in. Nada. The rent. The vendors. And I don't even want to think about letting Judy go. Are you listening to me? Don't worry about it. He's just an emotional guy. But that's the problem. Well, he'll come around. You know, just give him a few days. You'll what see. if he doesn't, Mitch? What he then? He will. Your lips to God's ear. We got the list here, Mr. McLeish, that we all worked on it. There's 127 names here. How did you get them? Bernie went to the same school. It was his idea. The yearbooks. Yearbooks? Yeah, that's right, Mr. McLeish. You went through all the eighth grade yearbooks, starting with Birmingham's first parish, Our Lady of Fatima in Sudbury, and then my school, St. James in Salem, and all the others where he was after that. It had to be the same thing everywhere. Yeah, we, uh, we looked for the type he liked. Called him on the phone, told him who we were, what we were doing. The ones on the list there, they said, yep, them too. Maybe there's more. I'm betting a lot more. At the request of Boston attorney, Roderick McLeish, Jr., over 30,000 pages of documents were released today by Superior Court Judge Constance Sweeney, showing that Cardinal Bernard Law was directly involved in the reassignment of Reverend Joseph Birmingham, Paul Shanley, and a dozen other Roman Catholic priests accused of sexual misconduct. This, after the shocking revelation surrounding Father John Gagan. McLeish said he needed this comprehensive overview to prove his core allegation that it was neither judgment error. Retired Catholic priest Paul Shanley was arrested this evening in San Diego on an extradition warrant from Boston police. Father Shanley, did you rape? and molest little boys when you were a priest in Boston. Did you do it? Well, I bet you don't miss the priesthood now, bro. Hardly anybody left except for the assholes like him. You know, to be honest with you, I always admired the bastard. We thought he was a radical, you know? <laughs> Sleeping by day, staying up all night working with the street kids. Oh, come on, come on. Even before law, Atheros knew what Chanley was really doing with those street kids. He knew when he kept it buried. Yeah. To those newspaper and television pundits who have speculated on my resignation, let me say that it is my desire to serve this archdiocese and the whole church with every fiber of my being. Jim Muller holds honorary degrees from five Catholic colleges. The anti-war group he helped start won him the Nobel Peace Prize. Well, tonight he's back on the national stage again this time as the founder of the Catholic group, Voice of the Faithful. We know that the problem of pedophilia is not limited to Boston. It's in Dallas, it's in Chicago, it's in Ireland and Australia. The problem here is a symptom of a disease. The underlying disease is absolute power. We're six miles from Lexington and Concord. The people of Boston know how to deal with absolute power. The insurance company refuses to pay any settlements under the claim. 
They're going to file a declaratory relief action with the court. On what basis? That the archdiocese had prior knowledge to the criminal acts of John Gagan. Keeping that from the company constitutes breach of contract. Well, we can appeal it. Wilson, could we win an appeal? Not likely. I want this Garabedian off the front page. Let me speak to the Finance Council. Jack Tannen's a realist. He'll see the wisdom of funding the settlement. I hope so. Should I resign, Daniel? Unfortunately, you've been fashioned by the press as a repository of all the church's problems. So. But resign? No, you should not resign. What I would like to see happen is for the Holy Father to call you to Rome to elevate you to a higher position in the Vatican. It's no shame to be called her own. And then the figurehead of this scandal is no longer there. How are you, Daniel? Hey, Howard, how are you? Jack. George. Daniel. Daniel. Sir? What can I get you? Uh, scotch, please, on the rocks. The Cardinal wants the settlement funded. So, are we going to do a deal? Daniel. With all due respect to the Cardinal, not a fucking chance. George, the Financial Council members are appointed by the Cardinal. He can fire you if he wanted. He could fire all of you. Uh, listen to me, Daniel. I know you just want to do the right thing by law. We want to see the victims compensated because God knows that's the least they deserve. And how many others haven't we heard from? But I'm telling you, until we get a lot more answers from his eminence, there isn't one council member that's going to okay church money. There's no money, Daniel. Donations from the laity are in the toilet. And you know better than most that big money won't go near law. No, we're right about this, Daniel. We have a canon lawyer that says it's not only our right to say no, but it's also our duty. Daniel, he, he's bringing the church down. Every fucking day he's there, he's bringing it down, brick by brick. Now maybe you want to think about what side you're standing on. Marge, you're wearing my favorite shoes again. All right, who died? You did. The law just released a statement to the press. They rescinded your settlement. Don't screw with me, Marge. He blamed it on the Finance Council, saying they refused to authorize the request. That son of a bitch! That was a firm offer. They, they, he didn't mention anything about a Finance Council. Yes, yeah, so they sandbagged me. They wait until 5.30 on a Friday afternoon. How am I supposed to get to my clients 5.30 Friday afternoon before they see it on the news? Hey, Patrick. Deb told me where I could find you. A couple of burgers. Thanks, Mitch. How long have you been living in here? Since Deb threw me out of the apartment. I'm just... 
just lose it sometimes, you know. Hey, I heard what they did. You think they'll be able to walk away from us? Over my dead body. Go on, eat your food. Thanks for picking me up. Think anything else can go wrong? Mitch, how many times do you have to be towed away? There's a parking lot next door. I know, whatever. When are you going to get a life? What? Nothing. Let's go. I don't want to be late. Coming. You look nice. Look what's in front of the office. Yeah. The fun's about to begin. Damn right it is. Excuse me. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. Cardinal Law has betrayed the victims once again. I mean, a whole bunch of despicable people who lie, cheat, and steal. They enable rapists. They steal the souls of children. I mean, how he can live with himself is beyond me. But he will hear that from the victims face to face in court. That's it. Thank you. That's it. That's it. That's it. What is the situation in the United States? It is imperative, Holy Father, that you realize that this is a real and dangerous crisis. It's not a mirage created by the media. Many of us have been working hard to remove problem priests, and we have been making progress. But with the shocking revelations that have come out of Boston, well, that sense of progress has just been wiped out. Donations are plummeting in all the dioceses across the country. The laity must hear something bold and reassuring from your holiness. I believe your holiness has not been well informed. We are Godzilla and Lars Tokyo. The abuse that has caused this crisis is by every standard wrong. And rightly, it is considered a crime by society. Also, it is an appalling sin in the eyes of God. There is no place in the priesthood and in the religious life for those who would harm the young. I have been told some of the American cardinals would like to see His Holiness demand your resignation, and that the majority of the American bishops feel it should be done quickly.
Bernard, why has it come to this? I tried so hard to keep my heart open for those priests. I believed with all my soul that they could change. In fact, I believed they had changed. I was wrong. If my resignation will draw the poison to me instead of to our mother, the church, I'm ready to resign. Holy Mother, the church does not make sacrifices at the altar of public opinion. Go home, Bernard, and work to solve the problem. And know you have my support and my prayers. Well, most of the American Cardinals are not going to the press conference. Why am I being told this now? Truth is, nobody gives a damn what the media thinks, especially the American media. Rome believes it's a homosexual problem and the liberal American culture that embraces them. Frankly, for once, Wilton, I don't disagree with the Vatican spaghetti benders. We're priests, Wilton, not PR men, not Ed, politicians. Ed, this is today. Without the media's cooperation, there's no chance of giving the church's story out effectively. Well, you're the new Catholic face of America, Wilton. You handle the press. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. As head of the Council of American Bishops, I will leave the national meeting in Dallas in two weeks to carry out the Holy Father's instructions. We will specifically fashion a rigorous protocol to deal with any priest who has abused children. Are you saying one strike and you're out? I'm saying that this will be my personal and absolute priority. Cardinal Law protected pedophile priests. Why isn't he here? Why isn't he talking to us? Has there been any further discussion about a resignation by Cardinal Law? Rome has spoken. We listen carefully to the words of Pope John Paul, but talk is cheap. Where was the pledge to disclose the names of priests who molest children? Where was the promise to report abuse to law officials, and where was the commitment to the victims? I think it's time for new leadership. I think it's time for Cardinal Law to resign. You must be good with these. <laughs> hey, funny man. You wanna know how that works? I'm gonna explain this to you so you really understand. You grab an 11 year old kid, you pull him to the floor, which isn't too hard because you're six foot two, see? You take your dick and you stick it down his fucking throat. Kid's having a fucking panic attack. Guy's knees in my back, you know? Guy's coming all over me, beating the shit out of me, because I'm still trying to get away. I'm still like, fuck you! You think that's a blown job, Vito? That's rape! You want to hear more? You tough enough? Because I can go places you never been! You fucking bread. 
Hey, fuck off. Who the fuck are you saying fuck him to, you little prick? Huh? That Cardinal's a bullshit machine. Keep saying how he wants to meet with the victims. I'm so sorry. Boo fucking who? Swear to God, I give my right nut to tell him right to his sanctimonious face. Yeah, go down to the church where he lives. <laughs> he doesn't live in the church, Gary. He lives in the residence. <laughs> the Cardinal's residence. Whatever. So why don't you? Yeah, why don't you? I'm here to see the Cardinal. The lady at the Chancery said I should speak to Father Connolly. Do you have an appointment? No, I do not. You will need to make an appointment. You have to do that over the telephone. I'll get you the number. Uh, but, uh, I've already called. Hey, Father Connolly! I've been looking for you. Do I know you? Well, John. I'm all in Horn. In the paper, it said the Cardinal would be happy to meet with me. See, I'm one of the victims. Well, sure, Ol, and the Cardinal would like to see you, but he's extremely busy. Uh, we have a lot of things scheduled this week. Perhaps you could call next week. I keep calling. Nobody ever calls back. And uh, who's this? Mullen Horn, I've come to speak with you. He's one of the victims, Your Eminence. Uh-huh. Um, well, OK. Olin? Sure. Um, would you sit over there, please? <clears throat> what should I call you? Because I'm not going to call you your eminence. And I don't feel comfortable calling your father. <laughs> They'll call me Bernie. Sure, that big Frankenstein over there want to pick me up and throw me on a fucking curbstone after three and a half minutes. I want you to understand I know what happened. And you know what happened. So all I need to know is, how the hell did you let this happen? People want to know, Bernie, how you could know about these men and then just move them around. I was trying to understand the pathology. I was trying to understand it through memos and um, letters from physicians and experts. I just never realized the effects it would have. I just never understood it. I brought some pictures for you. you probably don't remember. This is you. Yeah, right behind where you're standing there is my church. And that's me standing behind you. I'm waving. I'm that little guy there. And this. I'm Patrick. The difference between me and Patrick is I made my first Holy Communion and he didn't. I don't trust you guys to baptize my kid. To have my kid make his first fucking communion. This is my life, Benny. You should have known. You should have looked out for us. 
I'm Blaine Jett, Gary Bergeron, Bernie McDade. So many others, I don't even know their names. We were just kids. Don't turn away from Christ, Ola. He didn't fail you. I failed you. What are you gonna do right now, Barney? I mean, right this minute. I want you to do something, something bold. I want you to come get in a car with me. We got a support group, the survivors of Joseph Birmingham. You gotta meet these guys. But I can't. Why not? I, I'm on my way to meet a group of seminarians. When are you gonna take off the mask and own this thing, Bernie? Well, I'm trying. No. Try harder. Reach out. I can help you here. Do it, Bernie. Just do it. <laughs> All right. All right. I'll do it. is a very weak thing. But I don't know how else to begin. I beg your forgiveness, knowing what a difficult thing it is to give when the memories are so raw and the hurt is so deep. John. <clears throat> it started with his hand on my leg. Uh, and I just froze up. And then uh, he put his hands on my genitals. And I was looking outside the whole time at the cross on the church steeple. And I kept thinking, where was Jesus? I, th I thought he was going to come running in like the cavalry. <laughs> I was 12. I ran up to the second floor, and that bastard, he got me then. He just got me down on the floor, and he was just going like a madman. He was humping me like a dog. I couldn't run. He was a priest. How can you run away from a priest? And who would have believed me? Now, Birmingham almost destroyed me. I went from Eighth grade class president to being a total fuck up. My grades went in the toilet. I was turning into a drunk. And at home, I was a nightmare. And I came to hate the church. I want to ask for a moment of silence for the victims whose shame was so great that they committed suicide. Will someone from their family stand up for them, please? Don't close your eyes. 
eyes. Look at us. Jimbo, set him up. Put that away. These are on me. I've seen you before, haven't I? Oh, yeah. Vito's, you were at the counter. Vito's still shaking. <laughs> Angelo DeFranco. I read about you. I read about you, too. Bunch of fucking celebrities. Yeah, maybe we should get ourselves some club jackets. <laughs> Bernie McDade, Gary Bergeron, Tom Blanchett. How you doing? How you doing? Great, hey, boys. Angelo, what brings you all the way over here? I heard about your meeting with Law. And I just, uh, I thought I'd... Well, I know it was, you know, your thing at all, but... I just thought I'd come down and say, good. It was good what you said to Vito. And it was good what you guys done tonight. So... I never told you guys. What? Birmingham. The one looking for him. He was, it was back in 89, he was, he was dying. So I, I drove up to the hospital to see him. Father. Father. It's Tommy. Tommy Blanchett from Sudbury. I've come to visit you. You remember me, don't you, Father? I hated you. You know, what you did to me, and my brothers, and all those other boys in Sudbury, was wrong. You shamed me, Father. I was wrong. How could you do that? The reason... The real reason I've come... I want you to forgive me. I want you to, to forgive me for the hatred that I felt for you all this time. I believe, Father. The promise that Jesus Christ made to us is true. Would it be all right, Father, if, if we pray together? Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, heal Father Birmingham. Father, forgive him his sins so that he too might have eternal life.
We're a bunch of fucking queer ducks, aren't we? Your Honor, the plaintiffs feel that the Vatican might transfer the Cardinal to Rome to avoid answering my questions, so we are requesting that his passport be pulled. I object. Until such time as the Cardinal completes his deposition. Your Honor, this is outrageous. This is a Cardinal of the Catholic Church, not O.J. Simpson. All right, that's enough, Mr. Rogers. This court orders Defendant Cardinal Bernard Law to be deposed on Wednesday next. The deposition to be conducted in the jury room of courtroom 7, 9 a.m. Request to pull the defendant's passport is denied. So for the first time in the history of jurisprudence, a lawyer is going to depose a cardinal of the Roman Catholic Church. So tell me, Mr. Smart Guy, how the hell are we supposed to get our questions together in three days? I'm inviting the Franco and McSorley to the deposition. Got any objections? It's your party, Mitch. All right, all right, so in 1984, he, he gets tran removed from... St. From Brendan's. St. Brendan's and sent to St. Julius Saint three months later. This is the most important part. And then it's St. Yes. Luke's, right? Because then, yeah, yeah. St. Okay, Luke's I'll is 89. Because that 89. proves that he knew he was a pedophile. The door was open. Tom Doyle. Jesus Christ. I'm not that good. <laughs> well, come in, Father, come in. I've been keeping an eye on your progress. I thought maybe I could help a little. Brought a few notes. Square in the eye. You see darkness or evil, you just look right through it. Okay? Okay, I can do that. All right, all right, good. Come here, come here, here. All right, let's do this. Come here, I want you to come with me. Excuse me. Excuse me, we're gonna be coming through right here. Excuse me. Let me ask you this, sir. Since the time you were made cardinal of the Archdiocese of Boston, did you ever entertain the idea of moving sensitive records of priests accused of pedophilia to the Vatican Embassy in Washington, D.C., so they could not be subpoenaed? My client will not answer that absurd accusation. This is not a trial, Mr. Garabedi. The answer is no. I never looked at them. I was unaware at the time. That's unfortunate for the children. You are now aware that there was in that archive evidence of John Gagan having molested children going all the way back to 1965. Letters and notes from fellow priests, letters from parents like Mary Ryan, accusing Gagan of having been a child molester. Isn't that true? This is a deposition, may I remind you? I feel that you're conducting it as if it were a trial. I apologize. Will you answer the question? Yes. There was material about John Gagan, but as I stated a moment ago, that was not what I was looking for. Not then. All right, in 1984, you had Gagan removed from St. Brendan's Parish because he had admitted to having sexually molested children in his care. Is that right? Yes, he was removed for molesting several children, correct? Yes. Three months later, he was sent to St. Julia's where he continued to molest children. Isn't that correct? Yes, I believe so. Why was that? Why was a known pedophile priest allowed to continue? I usually relied on my bishops in such matters. It is a part of their duties. They made the day-to-day -day decisions. And yet you knew, you personally knew what had happened with Gagan. 
Well, I made it my practice to seek the analysis of professionals in the field, and psychiatrists, clinicians, therapists, as to whether uh, a priest accused of sexually abusing a child should be returned to ministry. Uh, that is what I based my decision on. Would it surprise you to know that the professionals who gave Gagan a clean bill of health in 1981 were in fact a Dr. Robert Mullins, a general practitioner, Gagan's family doctor who had no psychiatric training, and let me read this from the record, a Dr. John H. Brennan, a psychiatrist who had no experience in sexual deviant behavior other than, of course, his own history of having abused a patient. Did you know that, Cardinal Law? I had no way of knowing that. That was before my tenure. All right, well, let's talk about what the psychiatrist said during your tenure. And this is from <clears throat> St. Luke's, <clears throat> excuse me, a Catholic psychiatric hospital Gagan was sent to in 89. It is our judgment that Father Gagan has a long-standing and continuing problem with sexual attraction to prepubescent males and is at high risk. Do you recall ever seeing that, Cardinal? I'm not sure, but I am aware that uh, that was the feeling at that time about Gagan. It's a pity you didn't look into those secret files earlier. Perhaps you might have seen John Gagan on your radar then. And Jesus called a little child unto him. And he said, Verily I say unto you, that except ye be as little children, ye shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall offend one of these children who believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone be hanged around his neck and he be drowned in the depth of the sea. They're being encouraged and agitated by priests like Dominic Spagnoli out in Lowell. What are you talking about? This paper prints his sermons every Sunday like it was some kind of a show, only it's not funny. You're his voodoo doll sticking pins in you every Sunday. Take a look. Yes, what is it? We just got a very interesting phone call about Father Spagnolia. Craig Lamott came to see us. Does that name mean anything to you? Yes, sir, Roxbury. His brothers used to hang around St. Francis de Sales when I was working there. Craig indicated his belief that you molested him back in 1971. You can't be serious. I've spoken with the man. I found his story to be credible. Now, what story is that? I hope you'd tell me. <laughs> I, you guys, that's... The tent. It's a tent, isn't it? Yes, the tent. It was when I was doing the sit-in on the Cardinal's lawn. What was it, 1971, wasn't it? Oh, every night, uh, some people from Roxbury would come out and we'd sing songs, we'd uh, read scriptures. And one night, this kid, Craig, comes out with some of his friends, two guys, I, I can't remember them. And uh, they asked me if they can spend the night in the tent. I don't want, uh, the middle of the night, this kid, Craig, is, he's shaking me awake. Don't do that, he said. I remember those words, don't do that. I, I rolled over in the, in, the, in the middle of the night in my sleep. I was crushing the kid, I guess, but that was it. There was no kind of assault. He provided details only a victim of abuse could know. A horse shit! That's horse shit! Number, there were four of us in sleeping bags in this little tent. It was on the, the Cardinal's lawn for the mother of God. He reported two incidents. One in the tent, another in the rectory. The man's account seemed credible. Oh, incredible? 
It seems credible? Well, well, please, Father, tell me, what makes it seem credible? He gave an anatomical clue. Oh, oh, an anatomical clue. Well, come on, Father, spit it out, and I'll drop my pants right here, and we'll see if it's credible or if it's horse shit. Horse shit, which is what it is. It's not going to bring charges or pursue a suit, which is a relief to us. Huh. The Cardinals decided that your salary would not be interrupted and your medical insurance will continue as is. He just wants you to move out of residence before the end of the day and tend to your letter of resignation. I'll just bet he would. Well, fuck you, Father. Fuck you, that's right. And a royal fuck you to the guy in red. Prisoner, please rise. John J. Gagan. Having been found guilty of violation of the Criminal Code Part 4, Section 22A, indecent assault and battery on a child under 14, this court sentences you to 10 years maximum incarceration in Sousa Bornowski State Prison. How do you feel about the verdict, Angelo? Justice has been served. Does this bring closure for you? Closure? I don't know what that means. Scott is my witness. This never happened then. The bastard spent the last 15 years looking the other way. But now that the shit has hit the fan, Laws had to hang any priest who even pats a kid on the shoulder. He should have been a fucking politician. I'm gonna fight this, Billy. Of course. But you gotta fight it from inside directory. You can't leave town. You're, you're gonna get yourself a cannon lawyer, and you're gonna demand an investigation. Please be advised, pursuant to canon law, I oppose the cause for which you have invited to my resignation. I am refusing to resign my office of pastor. Signed and notarized by Father Dominic Spagnolia. He was ordered not to say mass, nor to perform any sacrament in public. Am I not correct? Well? Well, we'll see what God brings us, won't we? done nothing wrong. Please sit down, sit, sit down, thank you. When I was ordained in 1964, my embracing the joys and responsibilities of the Catholic priesthood did not abrogate my rights as an American citizen, I demand due process. I 
I will give the county prosecutor the name of my accuser. I will ask him to investigate swiftly so that I can return to our church and serve Mass before Easter. And I, I vow to you all that I will fight this fraudulent policy of removing priests based on allegations and not due process. And, and I have a message for Cardinal Law. You have no credibility among your priests. We can't trust you. We feel you'd give up any one of us in a minute to save your own ass. been and it always will be an honor for me to exercise the priesthood of Jesus Christ. As St. Paul has said, I can do all things in Christ who has strengthened me. Thank you for your loving support and thank you all for coming out today. And what, Marge? Hearsay? We've looked into it and can't find any evidence to charge Father Spagnoli with anything. But what about the 14-year-old boy? The 14-year-old boy is now a 42-year-old man. Now, this man, if he came to us now, which so far he has not, it would be more than a decade too late. Do you think that he was just seeking publicity, that he was lying? All I can tell you with certainty is, at this time, we have no hard evidence that any crime ever took place. Now, if you'll excuse me, I gotta go to work. Cardinal repeatedly stated there was a settlement. The court believed that too. Your Honor suspended discovery. Doesn't that mean that there was a settlement? It does if you take those words in isolation. I think if you take those words in context, it clearly means that what was meant here was that this is a proposed settlement. Yeah. Where in the editorial by the Cardinal does it say there was a conditional settlement, that there was a possible settlement, that there was a settlement that might be? Your Honor, we want the Archdiocese held to the offer they proffered to victims. Mr. Rogers, it's time. Find a number that you both can live with. Find it before the week is out. Don't force me to hold the Archdiocese in contempt. Mr. Garabedian, let's put this one to bed. All right. All right, okay. Send the paperwork. Ten million. Robinson. My name is Winston Reed. I was Dominic Spagnolia's lover. Why are you telling me this? Because he has decided to conveniently scissor me out of his history. I find it entirely unacceptable for a gay man to crawl back into the closet. It suggests shamefulness, sinfulness. I'm sorry, but he is completely hypocritical. Father Spags. Robbie. Yeah, how you doing, Robbie? What's up? I've just been speaking with Winston Reed. Is it true? Yeah, it's true.
Actually, it was during a, a period of time when I was out of the priesthood. I quit. I lost faith in the church and it was never going to change. I didn't want to be a corporate stooge anymore. Anyway, I was a civilian at the time, and I met this man. I thought I was in love with him. No, I was in love with him. It lasted five years. I was faithful, and he wasn't. That was the end of that. Next year, I was back in the priesthood. There never was anyone else. I swear to God, not before, not after, not once. Look, Billy, being gay, uh, you're conditioned to keep it a secret, to lie about it. I, Well, you can't be a priest and lie about something like that. You've got to talk to the press. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Uh, Look, being gay, being gay doesn't make you a pedophile. All right? Any more than being Irish makes you a drunk, or, 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 or being African American makes you a drug dealer, or being Jewish makes you good with money. These are all knee jerk prejudices. They're poisonous. Poisonous. And more importantly, they're wrong. I. All right, as it stands right now, this is the best offer we're going to get. 10 million over 86 plaintiffs. I'm not signing that, Mitch. I told you from the beginning it wasn't about the money. Fuck the money. I wouldn't have signed it for the $30 million deal. Look, I just want to... Uh, uh, what? What, Angelo? Well, you you want to punish him, right? No, Mitch. I don't want to punish him. I want it out in the open. I want everyone to know what they did to me and my little brother. Look around you. It's everywhere, every day in the paper, on TV. I mean, there's not a city in this country that hasn't been touched by this. Gagan. Shanley, they're all, all of them, they're in jail, and it happened because of you and Johnny and McSorley here, and all of the people in this room. It's not what I want! Let me just talk to you for a minute, right? Yeah. Look, Angelo, you got a good job. You got a home, you got a wife and kids. The money doesn't mean that much to you, but... You should know, McSorley's living out of his car. I mean, the guy needs therapy. He can't afford it. A lot of the others are pretty strung out, too. They need that money, and they need it now. What about you, Mitch? Me? Yeah, you. Is that what you think, Angelo, that I'm only in this for the dough? Yeah, well, you know something? You're wrong, pal. That really pisses me off. You know, if you're only in it for the money, you don't take on the Boston Archdiocese and sue the Cardinal. It'll be a hell of a great way to go broke fast. Listen, listen, just listen to me. This is not about me, it's about you. They were gonna bury us with their hitmen from Harvard Law or Princeton or Yale or wherever the hell it was. That's what they were gonna do, but we beat them. Shit, we beat them, Angelo. We did that, we did it. All right, yeah, fine. Along the way, for a little personal bonus, I got Mitchell Garabini and got the spit in their eye. Look, 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 you wanna hurt them, right? This is how you do it. You take their money, because money's the only fucking language they understand. Look, like I said, you do this because you want to do it. 
You'd do it because you, you know it's the right thing to do, Angelo. All right, I'll sign the fucking thing. All right? No, no, no. All right, let, let's go back in. Come on. 58 Roman Catholic priests today joined with action group Voice of the Faithful, calling on Boston's Cardinal Bernard Law to resign. This is significant. It's unprecedented. It shows the Cardinal does not have the backing of his own clergy. The Cardinal's got to go. I mean, the guy's lasted longer than the chairman of Enron. The Cardinal's ridiculous. He's got to go. We want our message heard in Rome. The Pope has to hear what Catholics in America have. Cardinal Bernard Law was directly involved. Cardinal Law is to blame for this. Joseph Birmingham, Paul Shanley, and Roman Catholic. Oh, Lord, how heavy thy honor is to bear. From His Eminence, Bernard Cardinal Law. I am profoundly grateful to the Holy Father for having accepted my resignation as Archbishop of Boston. It is my fervent prayer that this action may help the Archdiocese of Boston to experience the healing, reconciliation, and unity which are so desperately needed. To all those who have suffered from my shortcomings and mistakes, I both apologize and from them beg forgiveness. The particular circumstances of this time suggest a quiet departure. Please keep me in your prayers. Bernard Cardinal Law. Maria, can I have my check, please? Uh, you're covered, Mitch. Get us both going, huh? <laughs> you know, without a church father, where are you gonna go? Oh, you know, it'll be fine. I, Christ didn't have a church either, eh? Hey? Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's gonna be fine. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about a thing, Mary. <laughs> no. I put the check in the bank, but it's bad money. In a bad place in a bad way. There's so much pain. When will it stop? I am so proud to introduce to you the recipient of the first Voice of the Faithful's Priest of Integrity Award, Father Tom Doyle. You and I, we all have a 
voice in church decision making. We don't and never will accept authority unless it is accountable. The church resides not in some ancient institution, or grand cathedral, and certainly not in the princes of the church and their unbridled addiction to power. God's church resides in the hearts and souls of the people. You have proven that. Come on, Dad. I love boys, don't you?